Staying with that story, more than a quarter of a million pupils and about 10,000 teachers and staff have missed vital class time because of the disruptive taxi strike in the Cape. This is time that pupils can't afford to lose as they're already catching up on lesson time lost during the pandemic. Now, this has prompted Equal Education to call on the Western Cape government and Santaco to take immediate action to resolve the taxi strike to protect vulnerable pupils and school communities. To discuss this, I'm now joined by Equal Education General Secretary Nontredo Madube Dube. Thank you so much, Nontredo, for joining us uh, on Newsnight this evening. Can you tell us what the immediate impact is of the current strike uh, and subsequent violent protest on learners and their families. Hmm. So I do want to say that we started responding to the strike on Thursday. Uh, and by doing this, we tried to make sure that all of our members understood and knew that there was a potential strike that was to start that Thursday afternoon. We vacated our offices out of Ikailicha with our staff as well as safety precautions. Mm -hmm. And we understood there'd probably be something happening uh, on the national roads like the N2, which carry most of our members to and from school. We supervised and monitored this uh, sort of a strike action, the potential of it, on Friday morning. And at that point already, a lot of our learners were communicating um, on different platforms with us and sharing that indeed strikes had started. Um, and this we know already if it will be a transport, a public transport strike, taxi strike in particular, that um, there will be criminal activities and elements of burning and harassment mm -hmm. uh, of ordinary people trying to get to school and or work. So we asked our equalizers and members and learner members particularly to start letting us know where these things were happening uh, and who was in fact harassing uh, 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 and or uh, needing learners to not make the, the, their way to school. Mm -hmm. And so f from that space or for that time onwards, from Friday, we knew that we needed to do something at a very, a very systemic level to address the leadership, both of the Western Cape government and that of uh, Santaco. So the ideas around generating a public statement that came from uh, an organization or a movement that, that organizes and works with learners on a daily basis uh, ca came from the events that were happening in and around Cape Town and in parts of the Western Cape all throughout the weekend. And we knew that Monday would see an escalation uh, of these strikes. We've also been monitoring and following the discussions uh, and the negotiations between government and Santaco. And we understood also through members of the taxi associations that we are associated with, that there was no middle ground being found. And so this is why our statement really is calling on the leadership of both these institutions to think quite deeply about how protest actions and this kind of deadlock they find themselves in and the impact that has on the ordinary child, uh, in particular, that live in black uh, and brown communities and townships in South Africa and the ability to access schools. The, the last thing just to mention, sorry, uh, to, to, to keep going on, is that we found out on Monday that now the escalation of the strike meant that taxi drivers were going into schools and asking teachers to stop teaching and learning and demanding that learners be sent home. That, that was for the schools that were partially opened because some teachers could get in. So we started uh, hearing reflections from learners and teachers around uh, genuine feelings of, of unsafety uh, as teachers needing to escort children back to their places uh, of living. And so we, we really do want to continue to urge both parties, the Western Cape government and Santaco, uh, to find a, a peaceful resolution to the strike with immediate effect. We would love... Uh, for taxis and public transport to be able to run as of tomorrow. No, Edo, uh, we know it's a very complex situation. There are political undercurrents, but lest it become an academic exercise, I want to get to, to an understanding of the on-the-ground realities for learners. For some of our viewers who, who do not live in these communities, you know, it, it can seem like you know, a, a distant reality. But paint a picture for us for some of these learners who have engaged with you and told you of their experiences, of their anxiety and, and, and the very real fears that they live in communities where they are the learners who can least afford these disruptions after so many disruptions, COVID, load shedding, uh, ongoing service delivery protests, uh, schooling issues, and, and, and now a taxi strike that, that's keeping them away from school again. What are the consequences for them? Mm. There, there are two types of learners that Equal Education is in contact with. The first kind are those that are affected by the spatial inequalities and injustices of living in a place like Cape Town, 
those that need to travel out from the outskirts, so from Nyanga, Filipi, Kailicha, into the, the city center in the city ball area, for example, those learners could absolutely not access any kind of transportation. In fact, what I understand from some of our members is that from Thursday and Friday onwards, most buses, the Golden Arrow buses operating in Cape Town, could only drive into Kailicha as far as Site C, the very beginning of said township which meant that learners were having to walk the majority of the way home. And this meant that learners were leaving school at 3, but arriving home after 8 p.m. So part of what we were doing with these learners is asking that as soon as people get home to please check in and let us know that they've in fact arrived. So you had learners walking in the dark. It is winter. It gets dark around about quarter to six in Cape Town. So there, there were those kinds of conditions, first of all. And never mind the kinds of things that you meet on the journey to and from your bus stop and home. The second kind of learner that uh, has been reflecting with us are learners that uh, use local transport. So you're either living and studying in Strand or Kailicha or Kreifendain, but you'd walk to school or catch local transportation anyways, or have some kind of lift club arrangement uh, in the area. These learners too weren't able to move and or travel to school because of these taxi strikes and the violence. And the reason we've appealed to both government and Santaco is because the dynamic isn't just about government must help intervene to make sure that we have transportation for the next day. But it's also addressing Santaco because they aren't putting a, there isn't a good handle on the kind of protest that they are allowing to take place um, as a representation of their members' needs in these communities. The shooting and looting of stores um, and harassing of children is something that's been associated with these kinds of strikes. Now, learners that are affiliated and members of equal education also understand the education system in a broader context. They understand themselves to be already a generation of young black learners that have been left behind by the education system. They understand themselves to be in a system that uh, is unequal and disadvantages their experience of teaching and learning because of infrastructure challenges, of access to school nutrition, of access to LTSMs, which are books, school furnitures in some extent, uh, access to water, some of the conditions that learners are already affect facing. So, so they know that the odds are already skewed against them. And so what they're saying to us is that with not being able to be at school for a couple of days and the possibility of these schools being vandalized and damaged during this period, they are going to be further left behind. And they're urging their brothers and their fathers to think deeply about their, how, how they respond to the strike action and, and, and make sure to find immediate resolution. So the deep anxiety uh, of learners uh, at the moment is that we, we are being further left behind. And, and they are just... Um, what, what would you call it? They, they are just uh, collateral damage mm. to, to a big and complex fight that's being had by adults uh, they, they see and, and interact with in their own families and in their own communities. And I think that's the thing that hurts the most about the situation and circumstances we find ourselves in right now. Collateral damage. Thank you for sketching that picture uh, so effectively. Um, and thanks for speaking to us. We do hope that we can resolve uh, this strike so that uh, learners and teachers can get back to education. That was the Equal Education General Secretary, Nontredo Madube Dubeo.